So today we are going to work, uh, uh, study the major of dispersion, which is a kind of major uh, de uh, descriptive measures. It occurs after we actually work on the major of center tendency, which were mean, median, and mode. So if we, uh, the mean, median, mode are the basic uh, uh, analysis for the descriptive measures. Uh, uh, let's consider a scenario when we have two uh, diet program uh, which were obtained from the two groups of women. One uh, women were given the type uh, diet program one and then another group of women were given the diet program two. And then we have to find out the mean birth weight of these two diet program. Looking at the uh, values of the diet program one and the diet program two, we can see there are there are some differences uh, in the uh, data values from the group one and the data values from group two. But when we obtain the mean of the both group are same, which did not uh, we which we did not look like when we saw the data at the first. The mean come out to be the same uh, seven again. So uh, when you want to interpret the two type program, we will say that the uh, that the observation in the uh, the uh, the major from in the group one and the, in the group two are same. So the, uh, look, looking at the mean, there was no difference at all. So it means the major of center tendency are not enough to report the major uh, to do, to actually describe the data. So mean it means we have to actually work out with the variation in the data values, which happens with the major dispersion that we found that the center tendency does not tell us everything. So it only describes what the average outcome is. But how good a representation of the distribution is the mean or any other average, it depends on the spread of the data observation. So for that, we actually work out to measure, uh, now we are working out to measure a, a single score, a quantitative measure, which can describe how the data are spread out, how they are clustered together. Like for example, if we look at the, uh, at the polygon, so we will say if the all values are same, it means all the value have the same value. For example, let's talk about the earth gravity. The earth gravity is 9.8 meter per second uh, squared throughout the, uh, uh, the surface of the earth. So if every uh, part of the earth has the same uh, same uh, earth gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second square, it means there is no variation in the earth gravity on the surface of the earth. But there are some observation which can be dispersed uh, like this or like this. So if the data are, the, uh, are clustered together, they are the small enough. Let's suppose take the example of the diet program one. If it is ranging from the uh, seven to eight, so it means the data uh, have the small value. So that then the major dispersion will also be small. And if the data are spread high, like for example, the th from three to 11, so we are also assuming the spread is more. So the measure of dispersion will be the large, the value come out to be the quantitative measure will come out to be the larger as compared to that. For example, the measure of variation in this case is zero. In this case, it would be let's suppose 2.0. In this case, it would be let's suppose 10.0. So we are assuming that lower, the uh, more cluster the data are close to each other, they are uh, the major of dispersion, the quantitative measure will be the small. If the cluster is small, the data cluster is widely spread, then the major dispersion, the value of the dispersion will be high. So let's consider the body weight data again. And uh, with the mean, they both have the same mean, but we are assuming this data is a less, uh, uh, is less cluster as compared to that one. So we are going to discuss the three major dispersion here, range, interquartile range, and the variance and standard deviation. How to calculate the range of the value? The range is nothing but simply the difference between the maximum value in the data and the minimum value in the data. So for the birth weight of the data, we can see the minimum value is six and the maximum value is eight. And for the diet program two, the minimum value is three and the maximum value is 11. It means that when we actually uh, uh, take the difference, which is 
6 minus 8 is equal to 2 and 3 minus 11 is equal to uh, is equal to 8. So we can also see from these two values that the larger the spread of the data, the range is high. The smaller the spread of the data, the range is low or vice versa, we can say if the range is small, we can see that uh, uh, we can assume that uh, the data variation will be high. If the range is small, we can assume that the data variation is small. But the problem is that the range actually based on only true value, the maximum and minimum. For example, if there exists any outlier, only for example, instead of 100, uh, instead of the 11, the value would be 110. And, we, and the old value are the same, 3, 4, 8, 9. So we will say 110 minus 3 is equal to 107. It means the range is too large, large in the data set, although there was only one outlier which is causing that. So we will not get the what's going on between the data set. Or similarly, if here we have the outlier, let's suppose instead of 7, it would be 70. So we will say that the uh, range would be, let's suppose, on 68. So it means the most of the observation are close to each other, but due to one outlier, the range is actually not reporting what uh, is the exact variation in the data. So it, it uh, that's why it can be misleading when we are measuring, we are reporting the range where, uh, range in as a measure of dispersion. This problem can be curtailed, uh, can be solved with the interquartile range where quartile uh, was the uh, was the actually when we divide the data into three uh, four parts then the 50 at the 50th observation is the median which is q2 and the 25th observation is q1 which is uh, a lower quartile and the 75th value is the q3 which is the upper quartile so quartile the formula for quartile is the difference between q3 and q1 which means the 75th value value and the, uh, and the 25th value. So when we take the 75th value and the 25th value, so if there exists an outlier from the above side or from the lower side, so uh, it will uh, the problem will solve that it won't, the interquartile range will not take the extreme observation. So by this way, when we take the uh, difference between quartile three and quartile two, we will get the interquartile range. So for the birth weight data, we have two data set again. So uh, the let me tell you, the quartile one for this data set is 6.5 and Q3 is equal to 6.1. Q1 is equal to 3.5 for this data set and Q3 is equal to 10 for this data set. So it means the uh, subtracting these two quantity, the interquartile range for the first data set is 1.0 and for the second data set is 6.5. And again, the interpretation is the same thing. The larger the uh, variation in the data set, the higher the IQ, IQR, and the lower the inter, uh, uh, spread in the data set, the lower value of the IQR. But again, the problem is, uh, occurs that although it is a good measure when we are dealing with the skewed data, uh, so but the problem is that the interquartile range actually based on two quantity and that these two quantities are covering the 50% of the data set. Like I told you, the, 70, the 25th value is a Q1 and 75th value is a Q3. So the in between 75 minus 25, we are actually uh, covering the 50% of the data. So we, we, uh, we, we want, uh, we want a, a quantity which can cover all the data observation for this. We will consult with the variance or a standard deviation. So what is the Variance basically, it is it is it actually measure the deviation of each quantity from its mean. That means the each data observation and we and from its mean. So how we obtain is basically we actually subtract each quantity from its mean, and all the data observation will be uh, subtracted by the by its mean. And then we sum up that deviation while squaring them. And then we will divide from the, from the formula n minus one. This is the formula for the population variance when we are dealing with the entire data set. And this is the uh, entire population. And this is the quantity when we are dealing with the sample observation. 
The unit in this uh, uh, in this uh, of the variance is the is in qu square quantity. For example, if you have observed the weight of the uh, person and the main major unit is the kilogram, so due to this square quantity, the unit will become the square kilogram. And also, uh, the one problem is also that with the variance that due to the square quantity the uh, values uh, are too much and the variation of the major dispersion is to uh, appear to be too high when it is not basically so so to encounter this uh, issue that the due to square quantity the variance is not considered as good major dispersion because the unit are squared and the variation uh, comes out to be too high although it is not so to avoid this we will take the under root of that variance okay we will take the under root of that variance that is, uh, this was the formula for the variance that uh, subtracting each observation from its mean and squaring it, and then divided by the n minus one, this quantity will be taken, uh, by taking the under root of this quantity, we will get the, the standard deviation. So to measure the standard deviation, we need the variance and then, and then it's a square root. So consider the uh, birth weight example again. And uh, what we are going to do, we are going to measure the variance and standard deviation for this spread program. This is the data as a, a table for your ease that uh, these uh, we are working with the DAC program two. So these were the data observation in the DAC program two, three, four, eight, nine, eleven. 11. We knew that the mean was seven as we see from the, at the start of the lecture. So what we are going to do, we are going to subtract each of these value with their mean, and then we are going to square them. This is the optional thing, you can do it by yourself. So for example, this is some value three, and this was a mean seven. So what we did, we, we are actually subtracting each observation from its mean, that is three minus seven. Seven is the mean, three is the observation, which come out to be minus four. Four is the observation, um, and minus seven from the mean is minus three. Eight observation minus seven, which is mean is equal to one. Nine minus seven is equal to two and 11 was the observation and subtracting the seven, which is mean is equal to four. Now what we have to do, the second step is that using this formula that minus four square is equal to 16, minus three square is equal to nine, one is square one, two is square four, four is square is equal to 16. Then what we have to do, we obtain this quantity xi minus x bar square. So xi minus x bar square for corresponding to each observation are these 6, 9, 9, 11, 14, and 16. So then we have to sum up all these squares, which means 16 plus 9 plus 1 plus 4 plus 16. We will obtain this 46. So we obtain this numerator, which is 46 here. This numerator will have to divide by the number of observation minus one. We know the number of observation here are five. So five minus one is equal to four. So this 46 will be, when we divide this 46 with the four, we will obtain this quantity, which is the variance. And when we take the under root of that, we will obtain the standard deviation, which is shown in this slide. So 46 divided by four, 46 was the summation x minus x bar square divided by the four, four is the n minus one, come out to be 11.15 pound. So which means the, the interpretation is that it is, this, it is the average square deviation of each birth weight from its mean is 11.5 LB square, which is the pound square. And the square quantity is because of this thing. And the sample standard deviation is obtained by taking the under root of this quantity, which is a variant, under root of variance is 11.5, which is, is equal to 3.39, which means that the average deviation, now we're talking about the deviation only simply, the average deviation of each birth weight from its mean is equal to 3.39 pound, which means we had the data set of three, four, eight, nine, eleven. 9, 11. It means the average deviation of average deviation from three to four is, uh, is uh, 3.39 or from let's suppose from 3 to 11 is also although it looks like 11 minus 3 is 8 and 4 minus 3 is equal to 1 but looking at this we will say the average deviation the average difference with uh, deviation uh, of each observation uh, uh, from its mean is equal to 3.39 pound 
So this is uh, basically uh, the another uh, example we worked out uh, with the uh, we have the data of the diet pro from the diet program one. The observation are seven six eight seven seven. So using the same method which we have uh, done in the previous slides. What we have to do, we have to find out the standard variance and standard deviation from this data set. Find the variance and standard deviation from this data, set, uh, uh, this data set and give the answer in the comments below. And uh, we will check out, uh, I will check out the, uh, the answer of this data set also. Thank you.